Hi, my name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor and I'm on a mission to rebuild and restore this 111 year old classic sailing yacht Tally Ho. Now it's been five weeks since uh, you guys have had a planking update. Um, that's partly because the last video was all about the sails and rig, uh, but also because uh, I had a week, well, we all had a week off work because I was sick. Uh, it wasn't COVID thankfully, and I'm all better now. So I'm looking forward to showing you guys all the progress that we've made. I'm gonna be answering some questions which I've been asked in the last few weeks. Um, and one of the other things which I'm most pleased about, which you guys should notice in this video, is that the crew here has got so fast and efficient at riveting that we've started to run out of work for them and um, so actually I've started training some of them up on marking out and cutting out planks uh, which has uh, been good fun and uh, hopefully should speed up the process even more. So where this video starts five weeks ago we had I think about 38 planks on the boat out of 106 so we were just over a third of the way through. So right now we are strength testing the copper rivets and this is because uh, they are fastening the floors to the frames and I want to make sure that they're strong enough um, to make that connection because those floors are really holding the weight of the keel timber and the ballast keel to the boat so they have to have a nice strong connection to the frames themselves. Um, they were slightly larger previously and although there's a lot of them in there so they should be okay I just want to make sure that they're going to be strong enough um, and if they're not then we're going to have to replace some of them with bronze bolts. So right now we're going to do a shear test of uh, 770 pounds um, on one copper rivet. Well that way it wasn't a problem so that's really good news. I'm pretty impressed that the single rivet has taken so much weight here but we're just going to keep on adding weight until it breaks. So 
So now I'm strength testing this rivet in tension, so just pulling along the length of the rivet. So we've just lifted 1,200 pounds on this rig here with that rivet in tension. So that's the weight on the actual peened head of the rivet as well as the, the shaft. And uh, as you can see, it's holding it really well. There's no elongation, there's no gap forming, which is pretty surprising really, because this is a lot more weight than we thought they could take, a lot more weight than they need to take. So that's really good news. safety first at Samson Boatco. So now you guys have seen us messing around trying to uh, test these copper rivets in a, as unsafe a way as possible but you're probably wondering how we came up with the target loads and was that test really scientific and so on. So remember that these rivets as well as holding the planks on uh, are actually going to be holding the floors to the frame and that's what I was worried about that's what I wanted to test because we know they're more than strong enough for the planking um, but are they strong enough to hold the floors, which essentially hold the ballast keel, the lead on the bottom of the boat, to the rest of the boat um, through the keel bolts and the keel timber and the frames. Now I do work quite often with a shipbuilding engineer in the Netherlands and he helped us determine the target loads. However, these tests were all a little bit sketchy with sort of various variables in and it was um, pretty hard to tell uh, sort of if and when the copper was stretching before it broke. So I actually went to a local business, OSP Slings, just around the corner and they have an amazing testing facility there to um, break test the slings that they make. Now this incredible machine they have can test up to, I think they said about 500 thousand pounds now, that's pretty incredible that's 250 tons so we tested a variety of rivets there um, in a variety of different ways in in tension and in shear uh, and using a couple of different copper alloys that i have basically we found that the smallest weight which would actually break one of these rivets was 1100 kilos over a ton about uh, 2500 pounds And actually most of them weren't breaking until closer to 4,000 pounds, so that's uh, 1,800 kilos. So these numbers are way over what we need for this application. Having so many rivets going through these floors means that they're more than strong enough uh, to take the weight of the keel, uh, and that's nice and reassuring to know. Well, here we have a plank that's probably going to be one of the longest planks in the boat. This is uh, over 35 foot long in a single plank. The forward part of this plank is only about 12 foot. 
this plank is pretty much finished and ready to go on the boat. The last thing I do on the plank before it goes on is just take uh, an adjustable square, set it to one inch and just run a pencil line down one on each side and one inch away from the edge of the plank. And that just serves as a guide for when the guys are drilling for the fastenings. As long as they follow those lines, they're always gonna be one inch uh, inside the, the very edge of the plank and that'll keep it consistent. Now one process which I haven't filmed much but which actually takes quite a bit of time is the actual fairing of the frames before the planks go on. Now the majority of the fairing was already done but there's always going to be a little bit of fine tuning to go on before each actual plank goes on to make sure that it fits nice and tight against each frame there. Now this boat in particular uh, suddenly among yachts is unusual in that the frames are so closely spaced together and that they're fairly wide. So really about a third of the actual surface area of each plank is up against the frame. And of course the more frames you have and the closer they are to each other, uh, the more area that is to fare. In a boat with smaller frames and less of them, uh, there would be considerably less time spent fairing. Um, but with this boat, so many frames, it really is quite a time consuming job. Um, to make sure that the plank really lands nicely on each and every frame. Now one question which has been asked is why are we hollowing out the backs of the planks to fit the frames rather than just planing flat spots onto the frames to fit the planks onto? And um, there's several answers to this really. Hollowing out the planks is traditionally uh, a sort of more yachty way of doing it. The other method where you actually flatten the frames is more commonly seen on working boats, um, which is fine. With this though, I wanted to do it in the same way that it was done before, but also uh, I actually think that hollowing out the back of the planks, especially when you've got a lot of planks and they're narrower, is actually a lot less work. It doesn't take that long to do it. We have a pretty good system, um, but when you're flattening the frames you have to make sure the angle where two flats meet is exactly where the plank joins and that has to line up the whole way along the boat on every seam and to me that sounds like a lot of work. Now a minute ago I mentioned the width of the planks and that's something interesting to talk about as well. Um, like I said having narrower planks and more of them is more traditionally what you would see on yachts and part of the reason for that is that having more planks which are narrower is actually something that which makes the planking as a whole more stable and what I mean by that is obviously planks any timber expands and contracts as it gets wet and dry if you have um, much wider planks they are going to expand and contract more per corking seam so if you imagine um, say a uh, one huge 12 inch plank um, and say this particular timber in these conditions is going to expand and contract by half an inch per 12 inches. Now that is a huge gap for one corking seam to take. If you had four planks over those 12 inches of only three inches each, then you would have four corking seams to take that half an inch of expansion and contraction. So each corking seam would only be taking an eighth of an inch, um, which of course is much more manageable. Now, all those numbers are exaggerated just to make the point, but hopefully that illustrates what I'm talking about. So Tally Ho does have a lot of planks and they're really quite narrow. This is something that I followed from the original design, of course, and it does make more work when you're building it. We're having to make 106 planks, which is a lot for a boat of this size. Um, but hopefully that is reflected in the sort of stability of the planking as a whole when the boat is finished.
little while ago in one of my previous videos, someone uh, noticed um, a big bit of rot and nastiness in this frame here behind me and actually <laughs> screenshotted it and uh, posted it on uh, the Facebook group asking what was going on there. So uh, I just thought you guys might like to see the repair that's been done there and uh, that we haven't left the nice old big bit of rot in there. Matt. Yeah. What are you doing? Uh, I'm using these Swede nails to plug up screw holes left in the frames. Uh huh. So that water won't get in. <laughs> cool. What are the uh, What are they made of? These are made out of angelique. So same thing as the planking stock for the brats. Uh huh. And uh, cool. I guess that's that. <laughs> I think I'm done. No, I'm not, I just thought. Yeah, sure. Something about corking bevels. Uh, shoo. Uh, we've, uh, all of our planks get a corking bevel. A lot of people ask, what, what do you do between the planks? Where, why is there a big gap right there? What's going on? Isn't it gonna, gonna leak? Um, of course it's gonna leak. It's a boat, they all leak. So in traditional carvel planking, what we're doing, um, the, the rule is uh, when two planks meet like that, tight in the back, open in the front. So tight inboard, open outboard. Um, and that allows us a corking bevel. We give ourselves a corking bevel and we're gonna pack that with uh, cotton and that compresses in there. We twist it up, we'll use some special tools, some irons and mallets. That's what keeps the water out. Um, there's, and it, and it tensions the hull. Um, so we're edge setting all these planks together tight. Um, we're checking them with sealer gauges and uh, they'll, they'll shrink up here over time, even before we cork it, we'll, we'll see light through them. Um, but we'll, uh, the corking is really what makes it watertight and then it adds tension up and down on the hull to, to make a real tight hull. 
um, and it actually has kind of serves as its structural kind of to some extent. Um, our corking bevels, we're putting them on one edge of each plank. Um, and so like this, I don't know if you can see. Um, so this is an off cut from one of our planks. Um, it's uh, cut to, it's cut flat on this side. There may be a bevel there, but it's only one bevel um, depending on the shape of the boat at that point but on this on this top edge of the of the plank um, we've cut these at zero degrees and then it has a secondary bevel on the outboard edge and that way when your next plank fits against it it will be snug in the back and open in the front um, and so in that wedge shaped crack we'll pack our cotton and oakum. And that'll get oiled, cotton put in, um, painted, uh, bottom, bottom paint on the bottom seams, some white top side, side paint on the top seams, and then it'll get paid with, with seam compound of some sort. And there's various different concoctions that people use. Uh, we have been uh, carving our corking bevels um, by hand, um, where we're going about uh, between a half and two thirds in um, on the edge of the plank, and then um, about 3 16 uh, open on the outside of the plank. Um, so our, our, our corking bevel gap is 3 16 on the outside, and it goes into the plank about a half to two thirds the depth of the plank. Um, and we were doing that by hand. So, so you scribe those two lines, and you connect those lines with hand planes. So you'll use the power planer for a little bit to take a lot of the meat away, um, and then just clean it up with a hand plane. Um, and that takes a little bit of time, you know, you're running along a 30 foot plank. So because we're cutting, all of our planks have one square edge cut onto them. So at zero degrees, we have a square edge on every plank. Um, so we've started putting our corking bevels only on that side. The quick way we discovered to do it is to just make this simple router jig. So I fabbed this up like last week or something. And uh, it's just a trim router with a little wedge um, and it's offset our, our 3 16 here. Um, and so you can take it right down the square edge of a plank and hold it pretty steady and, and put your corking bevel right into it. Um, one pass and it's pretty much done. Uh, the, uh, the bearing on these bits leave a little ridge and so you just take that down with a, with a hand plane um, super, super quick, super easy and the plank's ready to go on the boat. So it's really, really sped up the process.